viewers to another episode on ASUG 12 exam. This is the fourth episode in which we are looking at the November 2022 Mathematics Paper 1. So in the first three episodes we covered question 1 through 6. In this episode we are starting with question 7. So let us move straight to question 7. Given that 2 comma negative 1 comma negative 4 dot dot are consecutive terms of an arithmetic progression find the a common difference d b formula for the nth term so basically what we are given in this case is the fact that this is an arithmetic progression and there is always a question on arithmetic progression then we've been given a three terms consecutive terms then question a requires us to find the common difference what we know is an arithmetic progression is given by t is equal to the first term plus basically n the the nth term minus 1 times the common difference which is d so what we know is basically from this uh, information we can find the d we know what the first term is which is basically a, a is the first term so the first term is basically a 2 what is uh, basically the second term so the second term we know what it is is in negative 1 so let us say we need to find t1 which is t1 is basically a which is 2 then uh, we need to find t2 t2 is basically equal to negative 1 then substituting in this what we end up with is basically negative 1 is equal to basically a what is a a is the first term which is a 2 then plus then n is t2 is n2 so it's 2 minus 1 then multiply by d so we are looking for the difference which is basically d then we have negative 1 is equal to basically 2 2 minus 1 is a 1 plus 1 then multiply by d this is plus 1 then we are going to have minus 1 is equal to 2 plus d then so for d we are going to have minus 1 then the moment these two crosses the equal sign becomes a negative so minus 2 is equal to basically d so minus 1 minus 2 is basically negative 3 equals to d because we are going to more negative so the common difference is basically uh, negative 3 alternatively what you can do is basically you have t1 t2 then t3 so to find the common difference just say t2 minus t1 then this is the same as basically t3 minus t2 because it will be the same difference so if you notice it will be basically minus 1 uh, minus 2 which is t1 which is this 2 then this is then this will give us basically minus basically 3 as in the answer then you do the same the other side the other side so it will be basically minus 4 minus negative 1 so it will be minus 4 then basically plus because negative times negative plus 1 then we are going to end up with minus 3 minus 3 so the common difference is basically uh, negative 3 so either way you still end up with basically negative 3 so choose whichever is comfortable with you so I would prefer you know uh, A because once you know A the first approach is much more straightforward but if you want to remember the formula you can uh, use the second alternative you still get uh, the answer correct we look at B we find basically the formula so from this formula we've known now what the common difference is so it's just a matter of substituting so we have basically t n equals to what is a a is basically 2 then plus we have n minus 1 then what is a d d we found it to be negative 3 then we expand this we have t n is equal to basically 2 negative 3 multiplied by n we have negative 3 n then negative 3 multiplied by negative 1 is a positive 3 then we have tn is equal to we collect the like terms remember this one is a positive and this is also a positive without uh, a variable just a constant so it will be 2 plus uh, 3 it will be 5 then minus uh, basically 3n 
So this one is basically the formula for the nth term, which is Tn. So for example, if basically T is 1, we put a 1 here, it will be basically 3, negative 3 times 1, it will be negative 3, then 5 minus negative 3, it will be a 2 here. Then similarly, if it's a 2, we we'll put basically um, 2 here, okay, we we'll put 2 here, so it will be basically negative 3 times 2, which is negative 6, 5 minus 6 is negative 1. So basically, this is how you answer this question. Let us look at question 8. 8a, the probability that a boy will be late for school on any particular day is x. Find, in terms of x, the probability that he will not be late for school. So, the question requires us to find, in terms of x, very important, the probability that the boy will not be late for school. Given that, we've been given the probability that the boy will be late for school, which is basically equal to x. So, let us say we have x, which is the probability that the boy will be late for school. Then, we add, let us say, x complement, which is in the probability that the boy will not be late for school, which is the opposite of being late for school. Remember, when you're dealing with sets, you have compl complements, which is what is not in that set. Then, there are two possible events. It's either the boy is late for school or is not late for school. If 70% of the time the boy is late for school, then 30% uh, of the time the boy is on time. Then if it happens that 25% of the times the boy is late for school, what it means is 75% of the time the boy is basically on time for school. That's the implication. Now remember probability is the likelihood that an event happens. So if you have a probability of 0 0.5, it means that's 50% of a time. All the possible outcomes, when you add them, you add their probabilities, you need to get a 1. So in this case, we only have two possible outcomes. It's either the boy is late for school or the boy is on time for school. Hence, when we add these two, we are going to get a 1. Then, if you say, let y be x complement, then you have x plus y is equal to 1. Then, we solve for y y is equal to basically 1 minus x, where x is greater or equal to 0, but less or equal to 1. Why 1? Because 1 means there is eternity. The probability that something is going to happen no matter what. That's what happens. So basically, this is basically how you answer question A. So we have 1 minus x, where x is greater or equal to uh, basically 1. That's how you answer question A. We go to question B. The vector in the direction from R to S is equal to open bracket negative 4, then 5, which is close bracket. So basically, it's negative 4,5 even in terms of coordinates. Given that the coordinates of the point S are 1,2, find the coordinates of the point R. So we need to find the coordinates of point R. So what we are given is movement from R to S. So, to make it easier for you, I'm going to draw a line. So, this is the line. I shall call this to be S, then this to be R. Then, if I were to do basically a Cartesian plane somewhere, and I imagine a Cartesian plane, this is X, then this is Y, then this is zero. So, all these points are measured relative to the origin. So, S is basically which is this one, 1, 2, like this. Then, 
of course we have error which we are being required to uh, find so but we know that uh, from origin to s we need to move how many times one point along the x axis then two points along the y axis that's what we need so all these points are measured relative to the origin this is the movement then how can we find a basically r so to find r what we need to do is we need to move r is the same as basically or r that's what it means so for me to move from a basically r to s it's the same as basically moving in the opposite direction in the opposite direction basically o r to o then basically o to s so this is basically r o plus basically o s that's what it implies because we are moving relative to the origin so given that what now that tells me is to find r r is the same as basically o r so basically this one comes in this direction so once that's the case i'm going to have minus r o is equal to o s then this one crosses the equal sign becomes also a negative so minus now r s that's what it implies so this tells me that for me to move from r to s in this direction is the same as going to the origin so backward of o r then going to a uh, basically o s so given that now the negative o r is the same as moving in this direction because it's a counter direction so i have o r is the same as the negative r o is equal to o s minus r s so now since we know that since we know that basically i'm going to move to the new page then we just substitute so remember we know what a uh, basically os is os is which is 1 2 this is os then we know what rs is is basically this one maybe without going there i can use this space which is here so i have or is equal to which is the same as just basically r is uh, equal to what is os is 1 2 then minus rs which is basically minus 4 then 5 then uh, we subtract this what we are going to get is 1 minus negative 4 is basically a 5 then what we have next is uh basically 2 minus 5 which is negative 3 so once we have that we are going to have basically a 5 then negative 3 here as our answer so basically this is how you answer this uh, question thank you viewers for watching uh, this uh, video if you are new to this channel consider subscribing to our channel because of course so much content for you so once you subscribe and go to our youtube channel you discover that we've got extensive exam revision where we've covered questions in mathematics physics and chemistry then we are also adding more subjects we've got also another section which is topic based exam question revisions this is the best section for you if you are facing any challenges in any specific topic remember for you to master anything you need to know how questions are asked and we give you tips and tricks by giving you extensive explanation to each and every question